Hey guys, I'm AH Designs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. The other night I noticed that a movie that I really enjoy watching sometimes is on Netflix. I don't know if it's always been there or if it's new to Canadian Netflix, but it's on there and I gave it a watch and oh my gosh, Mirror Mirror has some absolutely incredible costumes and I just really want to talk about it. If you haven't seen this movie, I would highly recommend it. It came out in 2012, so that's the version of the movie you're looking for, and it's a, an adaption of Snow White. While everyone else was doing dreary and edgy versions of fairy tales, this movie went more on the quirky route. I know it's not for everyone, it's considered a comedy, but it's not schlapstick. It's considered fantasy, but it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's almost cartoony, even though it's live action. So it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it is actually an extremely enjoyable movie. But if you don't watch it for the actual film itself, at least watch it for the costumes. I enjoyed the costumes so much that I even cosplayed as Snow White from Mirror Mirror back in 20... 16? I believe I was 18 years old when I made the costume and in most of the pictures I have the costume I'm actually 18 or 19 depending on when it was taken. So meaning I was about the same age as the actual character which was pretty cool. Costume designer of this movie is Aiko Ishioka, an absolutely amazing costume designer known for lots of other films and has also won Oscars and numerous other awards for her work. She actually died before the movie came out. This was the last movie she worked on. Part of me feels like she knew that she wouldn't make it through these cancer treatments so this was like her last big triumph of making costumes. So she went all out and it really shows. It's amazing how much her and her team accomplished and the costumes are just mind blowing. You can tell that there was so much thought and so much effort put in to the, the costume designs and the execution of them. The iconic Snow White gown, for example, the one that I cosplayed a few years ago, when I was wearing that at events, people would recognize that I was dressed as Snow White, even if they've never heard of Mirror Mirror. Aiko managed to design a version of the princess Snow White without looking anything like the Disney version and without looking like any other version of Snow White before it, but still being so recognizable as Snow White that people recognize what character she's supposed to be with just one look. That is quite an accomplishment. Now, something I find really neat is that in interviews, Aiko says that most of the costumes are kind of loosely based on 300 years worth of fashion. The director gave her a lot of freedom with design, so she designed things based from the 1600s all the way to the 1900s. And it shows because all the costumes are kind of all these different eras all over the place. But she made it work. Everything is so exaggerated and so extreme that these different eras just mush together in such colorful, extravagant ways just looks so visually interesting. Now, most of the inspiration from these different eras came in this form of the silhouettes as the colors usually match each other depending on what scene you are in. So in an earlier scene, they're wearing these fashions with the bigger wigs, with the boats in their, in their hair, in their wigs. And they're all wearing purples or I believe the other color is gold. In another scene, they're all wearing white or variations of white, except for of course the evil queen because she has to be big, bold and in the center of attention. I also really adore what I consider the capital effect. When you have two very different classes and one is extremely poor and one extremely rich, like in the Hunger Games, which is why I call it the capital effect, where those that are poor, you can really tell they're really poor because the colors they're wearing are all muted, dim, dirtier colors. And those that are wealthy aren't just wearing colorful clothing, but over the top with big wigs, colorful makeup, like so exaggerated that in scenes where you have the two together, it's actually a little bit jarring, but that only helps you really realize just how different the two classes are in the film. Like the scene with Snow White visiting the village for the first time. Snow White's costumes aren't that exaggerated, but she still stands out so much because of the bright yellow cloak she's wearing. I especially love most of the Evil Queen's costumes because the thought put into them is just executed so well. There's a scene where she says, oh no, gold is my color. And she's almost always wearing gold. Bold, bright, beautiful, exaggerated, huge golden outfits. Even her nightgown is extremely exaggerated in gold. And when she's not wearing gold, it's because she's wearing other bold things. The red peacock gown that she wears during the masquerade ball scene stands out so much in comparison to everyone else who's just wearing white or black. And even in her wedding scene, everyone else is wearing extremely exaggerated colors and she comes in in an off-white dress. And I find it interesting that they use off-white because she is not pure, right? She is not 
a good person. So she's not wearing a pure white. She's wearing an ivory, I believe. But the dress is just so huge that even everyone else in their exaggerated wigs and exaggerated colors and silhouettes, she still manages to stand out like crazy. And not to mention the shapes used on her costumes. There are sharp points and things around her necklines and on her skirt, especially on the wedding gown, everywhere on her dresses because she's supposed to be a sharp person, a dangerous person. She's not soft and inviting. Meanwhile, you have someone like the prince who is wearing some of the most toned down costumes in the movie. Even though he is likely the wealthiest character in the movie, he's not wearing anything colorful, exaggerated, unless the queen puts him in it. And even then, he's not overly dressed like everyone else is. I believe that is because they were trying to portray that he's not a materialistic person, even though he's rich. And if that was the case, it was, it was done quite well. I, I got that right away when I started seeing scenes with him in it. So he's the complete opposite from someone like the evil queen who is super materialistic, egotistical narcissist. Her and her kingdom of at least the rich people are so into the makeup, the hair, the gowns, and all these rich things, while he's not, which is probably why he likes Snow White in the end. He and that queen who don't get along are complete opposites from each other. And Snow White's costumes are mostly a really good balance of both of these things. She's just dressed the way she is because she, well, she's the princess of a kingdom, but her outfits are not over the top like the queens are. They're more muted, even if they're in bright, bold colors. The bright, bold colors really are just so she kind of fits in a little bit more with the people of the, this kingdom. And because she's the title character, um, Iko actually did say a few things in interviews about what her dresses are based off of, and they're really, really interesting. The first dress you see her in is based based on nature, it's based on natural things. And that iconic, beautiful blue gown, she's supposed to be a gift to the people in that one. That is what that one represents. And I think that is just absolutely incredible and really did come across quite nicely with the big orange bow on the back of the dress. But what I find really neat is how even in the costuming, you can tell a lot about those three main characters. Of course, the prince, who is not materialistic, which you can tell from his costumes, is going to like the kind and sweet looking Snow White and not the very materialistic and very egotistical narcissist, narcissist, narcissist queen. Just from that alone, you can tell that. And Snow White's costumes don't need to be exaggerated because the thing about her is that she's kind, she is selfless. So of course her costumes aren't gonna be as over the top as the queen's because she doesn't care as much about that kind of stuff. All in all, the costumes in this movie are just so well done, and I really, really enjoy watching it just for the costume sometimes. The colors, the silhouettes, the execution of all these things is just so good, and the movie is therefore so visually appealing to me. I know the movie's not everyone's cup of tea, and I know even the costumes might not be everyone's cup of tea, because they are, some of them are really out there, which is what I like about them. So that's my thoughts on the costuming in Mirror Mirror. Honestly, I just really enjoy the movie and enjoy the costumes in it so much. I just really want to talk about it with you guys. Maybe if I'm in the mood sometimes and I see a movie that I really enjoy the costumes of or something like that anytime in the future, maybe, maybe I'll do another little, little costume analysis. I studied in costume. We had to talk about costume design and interpretation and stuff like that and costume analysis. And I just really enjoy costumes and movies and the costumes in movies. I could discuss movie costumes all day with people because I have a lot to say about a lot of movies. Yes, a lot to say. But if this is the kind of content you'd like to see some more of and just watch me go on and on about costume movies, do let me know because I really enjoy talking about costumes and movies and movie costumes. And if you've liked this video, be sure to like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.